Welcome to the Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Welcome to the Table. Uh, it's a new initiative for Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, my name is Mark Bailey. I serve as president and uh, professor in Bible exposition. Seated with me is uh, Dr. Daryl Bach, who uh, serves as a research professor of New Testament studies and in a newly appointed uh, position as executive director of the Center for Cultural Engagement, uh, our new initiative. Dr. Mark Yarbrough is our vice president for academic affairs and dean of the faculty and uh, also teaches in the Department of Bible Exposition. So, gentlemen, welcome. And uh, we're delighted to uh, have you here and to introduce this new initiative for the seminary and a new uh, combination initiative of the Center for Christian Leadership and Cultural Engagement, which is an extension of the ministry uh, of uh, Dr. Howard Hendricks, Dr. Andy Seidel, now with Dr. Buck, uh, present. And let me begin by asking and answering the question, why have we embarked on a new initiative at Dallas Seminary in cultural engagement? And first, uh, I can take it all the way back to the roots of uh, a course that all of us uh, uh, had a part in, I in terms of teaching, and uh, both of you in terms of having taken it and then uh, taught in uh, the uh, school, and that is Prof. Hendricks introduced us to uh, the men of Issachar <laughs> in that great passage in First Chronicles 12.32, and you can almost uh, hear him in our you hearts and our minds, him. can't you? You can hear him saying that. And uh, he said, of the sen- sons of Issachar, men who understood the times, Uh, with knowledge of what Israel should do. Uh, Their chiefs were 200, and all their kinsmen were at their command. Uh, It was in a lecture and in that uh, impassioned plea to not only have the ability to exegete our Bibles, but also exegete our audiences and exegete the culture. And so, uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to uh, carry that uh, that mandate on of our beloved prof and our dear colleague. But... uh, Second, I want to turn to both of you, and that is that as you both travel, uh, you hear uh, the questions of uh, the church, you hear the questions of our alums, and uh, why is this initiative so strategic for us at Dallas Theological Seminary? Go ahead, Darrell. Well, uh, you know, I do uh, I share a, bit, a fair bit of travel, uh, both nationally and internationally, and I get a lot of questions from grads and from alums and then from people even at other schools who, who aren't associated with Dallas. And there are certain questions that consistently come up and certain issues that consistently come up, and they don't always come up directly in a class in the context of a curriculum. And the fact that they're being asked in the public square tells you that they're not always being addressed in the public square in the churches. And so uh, when this began to happen to all of us, uh, we began to talk about it and discuss what what might we do. A seminary has a a rare combination of resources that it can draw on and expertise, uh, people who spent their lives in different areas and uh, and concentrated on those areas. And so you can bring a lot of expertise to the study of an area. And so the thought was, you know, let's let's put together uh, a, a, a variety of ways, really, to address some of the concerns that we're hearing that aren't more naturally directly addressed oftentimes in the context of the church. And we began to discuss it, and, uh, and uh, the initiative that you're about to announce is the product of those discussions. We were in Lausanne, uh, Daryl and I together, with a number of our alums at the uh, Lausanne conference. Uh, two years ago, and we had a meeting with our alumni, and uh, what was uh, probably the number one request when we asked them how we could serve them? Well, the number one request for sure, and it came from several directions, from several continents, from several graduates, was, uh, can you please help us, particularly with issues of topics that are that are kind of in front and center in the culture, that again aren't directly addressed in in uh, in the normal flow of things, but obviously that have a biblical and theological dimension to them, and you know it it ran from uh, abortion to homosexuality to issues of how to deal with business materialism. I mean, there was a whole swath of topics, none of which you will find in our catalog under a course title. And uh, as a result, um, we, we we came back. We, we walked out of that meeting. I still remember this conversation that you and I had. We walked out of that meeting saying, whoa, that was that was significant because it was it was such a strong, consistent, multi-leveled voice that was coming out. It's almost like quadraphonic sound saying, you need to do something in this area. These were not just your run-of-the-mill. These these were international leaders 
Uh, that Luzon conference uh, was made up of a minority of Western representatives and a majority world uh, at that conference, and it was uh, without uh, question uh, the number one contribution they felt we could make was to speak into uh, these issues from the seminary's perspective. Uh, Mark, uh, talk to us a little bit about how uh, this also dovetails with uh, some of the very purposes that we have within our studies and our curriculum here at sure. Dallas Seminary. Sure. You know, we find a lot where there are things that you just can't cover in the classroom. I mean, you can cover certain things in the classroom, but uh, it will give us an opportunity to address things in a more expanded view. And we're really blessed with a wonderful faculty, our colleagues that we have an opportunity to teach with. But uh, we can take those topics and we can engage with other people, maybe even sometimes from other schools that have expertise, and we can bring those in. But as it dovetails directly into the classroom, uh, we have core competencies that all of us that teach are focused on. Uh, there are goals that we have for all of our students in all programs. And one of those core competencies that we have is listed as cultural engagement. And over the last several years, I think it was safe to say that as we've done some evaluation, we were able to focus in and say, that's an area we want to improve on, and how can we do that? And that started this process of saying we need to have some more focused ways to be able to address cultural engagement. And so this is, in many ways, one of the offshoots of some of those discussions. So we want to be able to address our core competency of cultural engagement, and this is one way that we can certainly do that. One of the reasons for this initiative also comes just to address where we are as Christians and as the Church of Jesus Christ in a, in a rapidly changing culture, in, in many ways a rapidly becoming post-Christian culture. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl, talk about a, a minute how, how important it is for us as Christians with both the engagement of truth, but also with the tone with which we engage, and well, why, that's, when, why that's so important. I, I think that seminaries, generally speaking, if they're committed to Scripture, do a pretty good job of teaching people how to move from the Bible to a topic. But um, the ability to move from a topic back to the Bible and make an assessment, that's actually a different kind of skill. And it involves a different kind of process. And so we want our students to be able to switch hit. And we want to talk about issues in such a way that the community is able to reflect on them and do a better job of switch hitting, if I can say it that way. And so our hope is, is that by uh, dis discussing these topics and bringing a tone in which we engage seriously and represent a position on the one hand, but show uh, a, a graciousness in the engagement in a way in which our goal is to help people um, um, live the way God designed them to live, and, and to uh, and to live well. Um, that hopefully the way in which we engage uh, comes across not only dealing with the the issues and discernment and assessment that needs to take place when you're dealing with culture, but does it in a tone and in a manner that, that uh, exemplifies uh, a Christian character and a Christian response and, and, and a Christian caring, not only for those in the church, but also for those outside the church that you're trying to draw into uh, appreciating what the gospel is all about. It really is, is looking at a balance. We, we, we teach scripture. We teach how to study the scripture. We teach the history of the church. We teach systematic theology and categories that we have used to summarize the entirety of Scripture. But in one sense, when we're faced with a topic in the culture, an issue in the culture, whether it's sexuality, whether it's the origins of life, whether it's marriage and family, whether it's justice or injustice, that's, that's where the biblical theology skills, uh, as you say, coming from that topic back to the Scriptures, what does the Scripture say about that needs to be more and more developed, not just by our students, but also as they go and are involved in ministry. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, that is. And the other half of it is is the ability also, if I can say it this way, to exegete the culture, to have an assessment about what's happening in the culture, what's driving what's happening in the culture, and knowing how to address that as well. So there's an appreciation not only for your subject matter and what the Bible is saying about that subject matter, but also, if I can say it that way, the audience to which you're presenting that message interacting 
connecting. And in some cases, it means it means as Christians doing a good job of listening to what the culture is saying about an issue, so that you're able to re, to respond to them uh, at a level in a way, in some cases, that they will appreciate. You know, one of the hard things for students sometimes is is that we believe uh, the Bible is true, and so when we speak and say the Bible says, that speaks to us, that resonates with us. But for someone for whom, in some cases, the Bible is the question, you've got to go almost to a different level. I like to say to students, is it true because it's in the Bible, or is it in the Bible because it's true? And that's not the same thing. Uh, and so unpacking how it's true because it's in the Bible, not because it's just the Bible, because it's true and God is telling us something that's true, unpacking how it's true sometimes can be helpful in interacting with your audience. And teaching students how to do that is a, is a skill that takes them beyond just the words on the page, but gets them to think through what is it God really trying to communicate here and yeah. why. That's a I've heard this picture used so many times, and it's in a variety of books, and I don't know who actually first stated it, but it's almost irrelevant. It's very, it's very true. When we talk about the issue of the Acts 2 versus the Acts 17, mm -hmm. that issue of knowing your audience, mm -hmm. you know, Paul's strategy in Acts 17, when it's you're going in and you're talking to a, a clearly a culture that does have not have a Jewish background, his strategy was totally different. So when you're talking about exegeting the culture, I think that's something that the church has to wrestle with today, and that's one of the things we're trying to model and to be able to even teach. And I, I think if you just to add to the imagery, if you think about Romans 1, when Paul writes in Romans 1 about the culture that he addresses in Acts 17, right, he's, right. it's pretty harsh. It, it's pretty hard-nosed. It's pretty direct. There's a challenge. But when he gets up to address that culture, right. there is a communication of a respect and an engagement and an invitation for them to walk into an open consideration of what God is doing and what God is about that, that has a completely different feel and tone to it. It, so that, in one sense, the in-house conversation has a certain element and feel to it, but that's not direct, just directly transferred to what's being said to people on the outside. Right. And there, and it, it's not duplicitous. That's not what I'm suggesting. It's just simply an awareness that that the the need of humanity is great. That's what Romans one is communicating, even with a sense of uh, of of how God reacts to that. But God, in His love and gracious, transcends that, so that when the gospel is offered. You can see the extending of a hand, of a of a handshake and an offer of a handshake with God to re reconcile that which is broken in the way that's done in Acts 17, and so the tone is completely different, right. and 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 that's that's part of the part of the skill is is knowing when to do what when when is when is uh, a direct confrontation called for, and when is it an over an opportunity to offer an invitation to someone to step into uh, a way of looking at life that they may not have considered before. Yeah, your reference, uh, and for our listeners, uh, Alistair McGrath uh, from uh, England came and did a, a series of lectures in our Griffith Thomas lectureship, our W.H. Griffith Thomas lectureship here, and where he walked through uh, uh, four lectures, but uh, three of those dealt with the context of Acts 2. Uh, the context of Acts mm. 17, and then when Paul was between the Roman, you know, in front of the Roman uh, leadership, right. and his method of engagement was very different, like you said, sure. with, with the Jewish audience who could presume a knowledge of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures. Uh, there was a lot of Scripture references right. and, and references to that. Uh, whereas in Acts, it was uh, it was theology. It, it wasn't uh, backed off of. It was uh, fully frontal, but it was uh, it was from a, uh, a theological without a quotational aspect. And then the Roman, uh, the loyalty issue between you know when they worship Caesar as God versus him worshiping God alone. Uh, those three were different approaches. But it was it's very instructive that God would give us a book like Acts mm -hmm. that would uh, would help us look at those different methods, and I think we learn a lot from that. Join us next week for part two of The Table Podcast. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well.